Welcome to A Line Through Time, where we take the time to look through your favourite franchises and work out how it all lines up. Yes, we, this one's another collab. This time I'd like you all to welcome my good friend, Cute Little Angel, an artist and all-around cool girl who just so happens to love the franchise we're covering today. Hello everyone, my name is Cute Little Angel, and just like Snake said, Fatal Frame is one of my favourite video game series of all time. It's a big inspiration for some of the art I make today, but it can be kind of hard to be a fan of it thanks to not living in Japan. I'm still glad for this chance to be able to talk about it in a video, so thank you Snake for this opportunity. But let's get right on to the meat of the video. The franchise began in December 2001 with Zero for the PlayStation 2. It released the following March in North America as Fatal Frame, while the European release Project Zero came out in August. Zero refers to the ghostly enemies being beings of nothingness, but I think we can all agree for once that this is the one time America got the better title over everyone else. This is kind of let down, however, by the terror box art and claims of the game being based on a true story when it just isn't. Each game follows a character or group of characters with a sixth sense, typically female due to a presumed greater connection and susceptibility to the spirit world utilising a special camera called the Camera Obscura that can exercise spirits. This draws on old superstitions that a camera could capture a person's soul, which seems weird since I'm pretty sure that kind of fetish art didn't exist back then. Bad jokes aside, the first game takes place in 1986. The story the story follows Miku Hinazaki as she searches for her brother Mafuyu, who disappeared in the haunted Himuro mansion. Miku learns that the mansion was the site of the strangling ritual, which was used to keep a gateway to hell closed. The previous sacrifice, Kyrie Himuro, refused to take part in the ritual following the murder of her lover, allowing the dark powers to spread across the mansion, which led to the deaths of all of its inhabitants. Her spirit captured Mafuyu due to his resemblance to her lover. In the normal ending, Mafuyu stays with Kyrie to keep her spirit company while she acts as the barrier to the gateway. In the hard mode ending, Kyrie convinces Mafuyu to leave with his sister. The later Xbox port makes a few improvements and additions, including a new ending where Kyrie's lover returns to her as the siblings leave so that everyone can be happy. We're going to do things a little differently here. Normally I'd cover each piece of media in release order, but Fatal Frame has a lot of supplemental material that's really ambiguous in its placement, so I think it'll be easier to establish the core timeline first, then go back and try to insert the non-game material afterwards. Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly released in November 2003. There are only a handful of connections to the first game. Yae Munakata, one of the first game's backstory characters and great-grandmother of the Hinasaki siblings, is a major part of 2's backstory, and the new sibling duo I descended from the creator of the camera obscura, Kunihiko Aso. The year of the story is a little vague, so we'll discuss that later. The game follows Mio and Mayu Amakura, a pair of twins who are visiting the abandoned Minakami village. The older sister, Mayu, follows a crimson and butterfly into the village, and Mio follows. It turns out there is another ritual to keep a great darkness at bay, the Crimson Sacrifice Ritual, in which a person must sacrifice their younger twin via strangulation. The twins Yai and Sai Kurosawa attempted to flee the village. Yai managed to escape, forcing the villagers to hang Sai in an attempt to complete the ritual. It failed, leading to the dead escaping the hellish abyss. Sai possesses Mayu, so Mio can fulfill Yai's role by strangling Mayu. The player can just leave the village alone, leading to the lingering scent ending. The Crimson Butterfly ending sees Mio perform the ritual and leave the village alone. In the hellish abyss ending, Mio saves Mayu but accidentally looks into the abyss, becoming permanently blind. The Promise ending from the Xbox port allows Mio to save Mayu and escape unharmed, while the Kurosawa twins enter the abyss together. Fatal Frame 3 The Tormented, or Zero Voice of the Tattoo, released on the PS2 in 2005 and wouldn't see an Xbox release. The game follows Rei Kurosawa, possibly related to the Kurosawa twins from 2, and features Miku as a secondary protagonist, along with Mio and Mayu's uncle, Kei Amakura. Supposedly, Mio was intended as the third protagonist, but the team felt her inclusion was unnecessary as her story was already complete, though she does cameo and serve as Kei's motivation. Miku is two years older in this game, setting it in 1988. I've never seen Mio's FF3 age listed, but it's generally accepted that 3 occurs only a few months after 2. If this is the case, then it too is set in 88. Following the death of her fiancé, Rei is having a reoccurring dream of entering the haunted manor of sleep. Each time she enters the manor, a tactic spreads further across her body. Her assistant Miku is suffering the same symptoms as are Kei and Mio. The curse is caused by Reika Kuze, the last tattooed priestess, who is supposed to contain the emotional pain of others in the tattoos on her body. The murder of her lover, shockingly, causes Reika to lose control and allow a dark power to engulf the Kuze shrine and create the dream world in which the manor resides. 
Those who are consumed by the loss of a loved one find themselves in the manor in their dreams, which is how Miku and Mio become involved in the game's story. This confirms that both Mafuyu and Mayu are dead, making the normal and Crimson Butterfly endings respectively canon. The game ends with either Kei being killed in the manor by Reika, or surviving and introducing Mio to Miku and Rei, bringing all three protagonists of the original trilogy together at last. Series director Makoto Shibata apparently confirmed on Twitter that he and the staff considered the latter ending canonical, giving these three girls some much needed closure. It seems like this was intended to be the end point for the storyline, as 2008 Zero Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is instead an unrelated prequel set in 1980. The game was co developed by Koei Tecmo, Grasshopper Manufacture, and Nintendo SPD for the Wii, and as you may have guessed from my use of the Japanese title, this entry was never localised. No reason was ever given, Nintendo and Tecmo just pointed pointed the finger at each other and left it at that. While pursuing suspected serial killer Yo Haibara in 1970, Detective Choshiro Kirishima discovers five girls Haibara had abducted, all of whom had lost their memories. The island they were taken to is hit by a catastrophe that wipes out the inhabitants two years later. Eight years after that, two of the girls die mysteriously, prompting the other three to return to the island to discover what happened to them, where one of them is killed almost immediately. Ruka Minazuki learns that yet another failed ritual had wiped out all the inhabitants of the island. Choshiro is actually a Spirit. Having tackled Hybera off a roof to their deaths around the time of the catastrophe caused by the failed ritual performed by Hybera's sister, Sakuya. Ruka helps Sakuya complete the ritual, laying the spirits of the dead to rest, making this the first time a human sacrifice is not the solution to the problem. The two endings only determine the fate of the final girl, Misaki, either disappearing off screen or being confirmed to survive. There is no canonical outcome to this game. 2012 saw two entries release. The major one was Project Zero Two Deep Crimson Butterfly, a Wii remake of the second game using the gameplay and Koei standard art style of the fourth game. While localised and released in Australia and Europe, there was never a release in America. The story is largely unchanged aside from aging the twins up by two years and adding two new endings. Shadow Festival sees the twins stay together as darkness envelops the village, and Frozen Butterfly has Mayu strangle Mio instead. Neither one really feels like it fits in the original story, but this version of the game has replaced the original in the canon, as we all know from the episode sold on game remakes. Also, Mio and Mayu look absolutely fucking adorable now. The other was Spirit Camera, the Cursed Memoir on the 3DS. It is an AR game using the 3DS itself as the Camera Obscura. It's set in our reality, so it's not likely to be considered canon. And this brings us to the latest entry in the franchise, Fatal Frame Maiden of Black Water from 2014. This entry released on the Wii U using the gamepad as a Camera Obscura, which is a fun gimmick for a couple hours before getting kinda monotonous. The game follows three protagonists, Yori Kozukata, whose biggest contribution is ruining Rule 34 Google search, Ren Hojo, a descendant of Dr. Aso, one of the few male members of the cast and the only member of the cast to not be influenced by the Cursed Mountain, further supporting the idea of women being more in tune with the spirits, and Miyu Hinasaki, Miku's 17 year old daughter. Miku herself makes an appearance, now aged 37, as the game is set in 2006. In the name of brevity and good taste, and because this script took longer to write than expected, I move discussion of her father to wasted potential so we can just move on. Sound good? Yeah, I'd rather not think about that whole thing. Instead, let's discuss the less unsettling subject of failed rituals that lead to hundreds of deaths. The story is set on Hikami Mountain, a mountain known for suicides and spiritual happenings. Yuri lives with Hisoka Kurosawa, a relative of Rei's, who goes missing on the mountain. Ren comes to investigate the failed rituals and the dreams he's been having surrounding them, and Miyu is searching for her missing mother. Rather than standard game endings, each character is given multiple endings for their individual storylines. Miku can either cross into the spirit world to be with Mafuyu, or is convinced to stay with Miyu. Ren has four endings, depending on which of the two brides he chooses to fulfill his ancestors' prior commitments with, and how each situation is handled. He lives regardless. Yuri's ending depends on whether she defeats the final boss above or below water, leading to either her survival or her suicide. There's also a side story in the game following INA from Dead or Alive. As I discussed in the DOA slash NG episode, there are no connections to the main FF plot or even a camera obscura, so I don't consider it as part of the Fatal Frame universe. I see it as part of the DOA away world instead. With all of this done, let's try to delve into the supplementary material. I say try because most of the stuff only exists in Japanese, and in some cases we can't even verify their existence beyond mentions on fan sites and wikis. The Himuro Investigation Record is a website that documents an unknown visitor's journey through the Himuro Mansion. It exists to fill in some details that weren't included in the game. The description of the Narukami Shrine mentions that something is enshrined there, which would be the holy mirror fragment Miku obtains there in the game. Likewise, there's no mention of the five Buddha statues Miku 
Riku uses to access the fragment. Despite the investigator not encountering any ghosts and getting further into the mansion than they probably should be able to without completing the puzzles Miku does, the fact that everything lines up with the layout at the start of the game seems like a very intentional decision on the part of the creators of the site. As such, we'll place it prior to the game. In 2002, an audio drama named Zero Sound Horror released on the DDI Pocket brand phones. Yes, though specifically, information on the plot is scarce, but Shibata said on Twitter that it follows some people who explored the humanoid mansion after the events of the game. They were attacked by very specific ghosts from the game, which we're not sure should be possible given how the game ends. Word of God does place it after the game, and at least one of the characters has a mobile phone. From my research, proper mobile phones came to Japan in 1988. This coincides with the year Fatal Frame 3 takes place in which Miku briefly encounters Mafia again in the manner of sleep. What's the relevance of this? This suggests to me that Zero Sound Horror takes place after 3 in which the mansion became re-haunted because Kirie got pissed that her eternal companion fucks his own sister. Uh, I thought you said we weren't going to talk about that. Yeah, but that was before I thought up this joke and it really doesn't work without the bluntness of being open about it. Moving on before you ruin the series any more for me, Zero Novel is a short novel supposedly inspired by a glitch during the testing of the first game's PAL version, where Mafuyu would run around taking pictures even when no one was touching the controller. It follows Mafuyu as he's asked to write a novelization of the game, only to discover that he shares a name and likeness to one of the game's characters. His real-life sister, Miku, disappears, prompting him to travel to the real Humanor Mansion with some of the game's staff to find her. Obviously, it isn't canon. There was a mobile game called Real Zero Another Edition, which doesn't seem to have a story, but we have to mention it. Then there's the Zero Three comic anthology, which I don't count as it was produced by fans. But Tecmo did apparently give the anthology support, whatever that means. It's a series of 10 short stories, three being parodies. The seven serious ones focus on characters from Fatal Frame 3, ranging from a story about Miku waking up from a bad dream to an entire backstory created for the Osaka twins. There are some continuity hiccups like the name of the hospital being different, but it mostly fits into the canon. Most of the stories take place during the game, but the Crimson Dream chapter takes place prior to Fatal Frame 2's backstory, and the Hesitation chapter takes place during Fatal Frame 3's backstory. Fatal Frame Shadow Priestess is a manga with a story developed by Koei Tech Tecmo and released in Japanese and English on Manga Box in 2014. Unfortunately, neither version is available anymore and wiki summaries are mostly incomplete, making it difficult to save a show when it's set. It began publication prior to the fifth game's release, so we'll place it there. If anyone can verify anything about when the manga is set, please let us know. Zero, the movie, also released in 2014, based off the novel Fatal Frame, A Curse Affecting Only Girls, which released that same year. It centers on a curse at an all-girls Catholic school that relates to a group of lesbian students that formed a suicide pact due to societal disdain towards same-sex relationships. Again, there are no clear dates, so we'll place this between the manga and the fifth game, since that's how it was released. And that's the series up to now. We can place the years for the five games, but not the other media. It's a shame, really. But we have the order, and that's what matters most. So without further ado, the Fatal Frame slash Zero slash Project Zero timeline goes a little something like this. 13th of December, 1837. The current rope shrine maiden, Kirie Himuro, refuses to take part in the strangling ritual following the murder of her lover. 1,347 people are killed in the ensuing calamity. Unknown year. Kyozo Kururugi slaughters the shrine maidens and priests on Mount Hikami. The current maiden of black water, Ose Kurosawa, fails her ritual to become an immortal flower as a result. The black water floods the mountain, cursing it. After losing her family in a disaster, Reiki Yukishiro is adopted into the Kuze family to become the next tattooed priestess. She falls in love with Kaname Ototsuki, who later interrupts the ritual by awakening her from her slumber. His grandmother, Yashu, murders him as a result. Reika's grief causes the unleashing, spreading the rift and cursing the villagers. Yai and Sai Kurosawa attempt to flee Minakami village to avoid taking part in the Crimson Sacrifice ritual. Yai escapes while Sai is captured and hanged to complete the ritual. The ritual fails, causing the repentance. The villagers are wiped out and the village disappears. 25th of February, 1936. Suzume Umishima is murdered by the principal of Karasawa Elementary and buried in the school's foundations. 17th of September, 1970. Suspected serial killer Yo Haibara abducts five girls on Rogetsu Island to perform the forbidden form of the Kagura dance ritual with his sister, Sakuya. The ritual fails, causing Sakuya to fall into a coma and the girls to lose their memories. Detective Choshiro Kirishima saves the girls and continues his pursuit of Haibara. 17th of September, 1972. Kirishima tracks 
Max Hybrida to the Hybrida Hospital and both fall from the roof to their deaths. Sakuya awakens from her coma, suffering from Lunar Sedata Syndrome. She wanders the island, spreading the infection until the entire population is wiped out. 17th of September, 1980. Following the deaths of two of the abducted girls, the remaining three return to the island to reclaim their missing memories. Ruka Minazuki helps Sakuya's spirit to complete the ritual, laying the spirits of the dead to rest. 1986, 24th of September. Mafuyu Hinasaki disappears in the haunted Himeno mansion while searching for his missing mentor, Junsei Takamine. 3rd of October. Miku Hinasaki travels to the mansion to find her brother. 6th of October. Mafuyu chooses to stay with Kirie to keep her company while Miku leaves alone. She is taken in by Mafuyu's friend, Yu Aso, and his fiance, Rei Kurosawa. 1988. July. Mio and Mayu Amakura become lost in Minakami village. The two are forced to complete the Crimson Sacrifice ritual to release the souls of the dead. Mio is found alone in the woods a week later. She is taken in by her uncle, Kei. Yu and Rei are involved in a car crash in which Yu is killed. September. Mio, Miku and Rei begin showing symptoms of the tattooed curse. Miku and Mio fall into comas during which Miku meets her brother's spirit, conceiving a child. Rei helps Reika and Kaname find peace, ending the curse. Mio is introduced to Rei and Miku by Kei. 1992. Miku travels to Mount Hikami to take part in a ghost wedding with Mafuyu, leaving their daughter Miyu with an acquaintance. Unknown year. Three people travel to the Himuro mansion and are attacked by ghosts. Sara Washizuki investigates Karasawa Elementary with her modern architecture group. She exercises Suzume's spirit, ending her curse and causing the building to collapse. Students enrolled at a Catholic all-girls school begin disappearing and turning up dead as the alleged result of a curse. Ayaskimuri and Michi Kazato uncover the involvement of the school nun, Mayumi Aso. Mayumi and her brother commit suicide as the authorities close in. 2006. Miyu travels to Mount Hikami to find her mother. She successfully does so, while Yori Kozukata and Ren Hojo lay the spirit of Ose Kurosawa to rest. Well, that was... something. I honestly didn't expect this series to be quite so complicated. What about you, Angel? Angel? Hello? Hmm... I have two theories. Either she's still mad at me for talking about the incest thing and will never collaborate with me again, or she's been spirited away to Mount Hikami because Ren didn't think to lock the doors when there's clearly a pattern of women being spirited away from Hisoka's house, you stupid son of a bitch! If you liked this video, why not subscribe and check the description for more content and also check out some of Angel's art. If not, then make sure to check out Angel's stuff anyway so you can see at least some good content today.